everybody. Welcome back to When Reality Hits with Jackson Brittany. We are so happy you're tuning in with us again this week. I hope everybody's had a wonderful week and an amazing weekend to come. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hope everybody's having a great day. Let's get into it. We have a lot to talk about again. Yes, we are so... Especially with our favorite show, Love Island. <laughs> yeah, right now, obviously, we have been recapping a little bit last week of Love Island. Um, so now the finale is out. We know who has won, but before we get there, I got to tell you all a little story because, as you know, we are so into Love Island. We have always loved Hannah and Marco. We thought that they should win no matter what. Well, I was using the restroom earlier. Jax runs into the restroom where I'm trying to be by myself for a second. He runs in there and is like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm starting to follow Marco because I love Marco. And I was like, okay, awesome, whatever. Well, then he runs back in and is like, oh, no, I just started following Marco, so I saw who won. We had not watched it. We were like watching a couple days late. We just got to watch it today. So he comes in there and basically ruins the ending for me and then goes, oh, well, Hannah and Marco didn't win anyway. So so then I'm over here thinking Hannah and Marco didn't win and he ruined the ending for me. And I was so annoyed. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can't do that when you're <laughs> well, watching a show with your partner. So Jack's already knew by this point that Hannah and Marco won. Woo woo. Congrats, Hannah and Marco. We were rooting for them anyway. We wanted them to win. But Jax comes in there. So he's all, now that he started following Marco, he already saw the, the, the ending. And nothing drives me more crazy than whenever somebody already knows the ending or something about a movie or a reality show or something you're watching. And then you have to watch it with them. Well, then he tried to cover his steps and say that Hannah and Marco didn't win. So then I was, was pissed so, off. <laughs> she was so mad. I was like, oh my gosh. Well, I made the mistake. Was I've, I've been so good about this. I've been not looking at the Instagram the Love Island Instagram. I've been really good. I, I haven't looked or seen anything like that or any you know secrets or whatever. And I made the mistake of looking up the cast on Instagram. Ugh, you and I wanted do to that. follow Marco. I wanted to tell him I was I a big fan. I told you the finale was already announced, so you should have known better. You know, and I literally ruined it. Oh. Yeah, Cruz is excited too. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't know, for some reason I just wanted to look up the cast. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't I know what you were thinking it was either. coming out and I just, well... I wanted to be friends with Marco. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then he comes in there and is like, oh, well, they didn't win anyway. So I was just so mad. I was like, oh, well, that's been Cassie and Leo, which I was rooting for them, too, secretively. Like, I want, I thought it was going to be Hannah and Marco or Cassie and Leo. I, I called Marco and, and Hannah since we, the beginning. We did. We, the they showed true love since the start. Like, I think they're actually going to make it outside. But Cassie was growing on me. Cassie and Leo, like, I think Leo really, really likes Cassie. And he was actually showing it in the last couple episodes. So I was kind of rooting for them, too. The only thing in the top four. So this is how it went if in case you guys didn't see it fourth place was carmen and kenzo third place was bergie and taylor second place was leo and cassie and first place was hannah and marco i think all those were great except for i think third place should have been carmen and kenzo and yes. fourth place should have been bergie and taylor yeah I'm, I'm i think america buying, i'm still not buying the bergie uh I like them as individuals. I individuals, think Taylor's yes. great. I love Bergie. I think he's like America's little sweetheart right now. And I think if he was with somebody else, he probably would have won the whole thing. Uh -huh. But I think that them as a couple doesn't really make sense. No. They didn't seem like that they actually really were into each other. But no. they're both beautiful, amazing people. Oh, yeah. Both great individuals. Yeah. Love them both. But like, I, like you said, uh, definitely um, love them better as separate. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right? I think I think they're so cute and they're they're great, but I think that they're definitely not going to keep dating in the outside world. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I mean, Jax always loves to say that they get to like do these extravagant like dates and things and like just kind of like the Bachelor it's like too. The bachelor, it's the same thing. Like, of course they're going to have fun and be in love. You're in <laughs> Fiji going to dates on a helicopter on your own island. Of course it's amazing. We'll see how long it lasts when you get outside. Have to start paying rent, yeah, paying mortgage, and they live so far away things. from each other. So like, I wonder like are people going to move into together like are they going to do long distance dating for a while like, like i wonder all... how it's going to go because they all became boyfriend and girlfriend they all told each other they loved each other on right. the season finale so it seems like they're all gonna well not all but it seems like a couple of them want to move to la they're like oh we're gonna move to la and be i with... mean they're all so hot they basically belong in la right. so and, i can and see it influencers yeah <laughs> hey <laughs> let's be honest it's it's the it next works influencer yeah but like they're all beautiful people and I, I like i said i definitely thought it was going to be between leo and cassie and hannah and marco those were the two that i definitely thought it was going to be between i'm so glad hannah and marco won i'm sure everybody agrees like they definitely are in love and of course they split the money i just think it's so cute so they get a hundred grand before taxes 
So, <laughs> but you don't know that. Like, maybe yeah. they'll get tagged. May, we don't know how their thing That's works. That's how it works. I, I, I've been on a reality show. I've been on a couple of reality shows. I know how it's going. Uh, you get the money, and then they tax you after. Okay. <laughs> That's all Jack thinks about is taxes and, like, taking money away. It's well, like, all right, chill. Show, you're on the Let show. them just enjoy their fun for now. You're on the show for – how long were they on the show for? Was it a month? I don't know. I don't know how long it was exactly, but – So, basically, they're taking home 40 each. I hope that they make it work in the real world, though, because – you know, they, they could be such cute couples. No, I, I think they will work. I think Marco and Hannah will for Speaking sure. Speaking of them, like, all asking each other to be, like, their girlfriend and making things official, did you ever ask me to be your girlfriend? Like, did we ever have that conversation, or did we just, like... I think we just assumed it. Like, have you thought about... Have I? Did I? I did I just say I mean, that it's been eight years ago, so I'm trying to remember. Like, I don't remember you ever just being like, are you my girlfriend now? Or I did we have that talk? I don't, I don't know. know. We did. I, I do remember when you told me you loved me. It was like... I was in town in L.A. visiting what, before I had ever moved to L.A. or anything. I think we knew, knew each other for like two weeks and you said it. Right. So, I do, do you I, remember, I remember saying remember that? Saying it, yeah. Where were I we? I can't remember where we were. I think we were at a restaurant. What? No. We were not at a restaurant on the pier in Santa Monica. We were in your studio apartment with the bikes on the wall. Oh, with the bikes. <laughs> what? I, mean, I had bikes on my wall. I was a single guy living it's in a just, studio apartment listen, in Listen, I'm just telling it to the listeners because if they picture the studio apartment, immediately you picture the bikes on the wall that you n- probably never rode. Which, which, <laughs> Ever. which I did post a picture of that studio apartment of you and I a couple of weeks ago. Did Aww. you see that picture of you and I? I looked like a little baby. You were, you were a little baby. Eight now. years ago. Goodness gracious. Made such a difference. It's, it's we had by. no baby then. It seems like Cruz was always in our life like it's it's insane but i did love that like i said hannah marco winning made a great thing i love that hannah and bergie became like such close friends i thought that was so cute yeah because i mean we all just love bergie yeah I, but i i just i don't know i want the best for him i want him to like go out and like now he's gonna be like this little hottie walking around dairy queen uh you know everybody's <laughs> gonna want bergie <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Everybody's going to get blizzards. At, at, yeah, at everybody's, everybody's going to come to, for his milkshakes. Bergie's, Bergie's blizzards. <laughs> Bergie's milkshakes. Bring in the, the girls to the yard. I, I got to say, though, Kenzo bothers me. Something about him. He seems like a nice guy. He just seems a little controlling. Do you see? Do you get that? There you get was, vibes from that? Yeah, there was definitely some like controlling vibes. I think it was whenever he, whenever um, Carmen was dancing on the guys for like just like having fun or whatever, and he was being kind of weird about it. But then again, he also does like really cute things with her. No, he so does. He I go does. back and forth on thinking like, maybe he just is a very, very respectful guy, and like he actually just thinks of like those old, old like Southern ways. Like he doesn't want to like his girl dance on anybody, but also he. Didn't didn't dance on anybody so that was the only reason i was like okay maybe he's not so crazy maybe he's just trying to be really respectful and, and for the parents they didn't even want to go into the hideaway because he said that he respects her father and he was like i'm on, on i'm on his good side right now so i don't want that to change I, you know, you know that was a good move on his part i just felt like i don't know i just watching him watching his there's definitely stuff, some times some little vibes where he's like he's holding on to her like this just really aggressively and i just thought what do you think, Chrissy? Yeah. <laughs> Chris is running around. Chris is listening to our uh, podcast, running around. So if you doing guys hear, little jungle gyms on our backs right now. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 it's, yeah, I'm sure he's a great guy. I just, you know, if we're dissecting it a little bit. Yeah, it of course. Of controlling vibes. Of course. Um, but I think. You can also tell, by the way, you can also tell the ones that obviously watch this and we're dissecting because, you know, being on reality, you can kind of, you know, the things to look out for. But you can tell the ones that gained weight. Lost weight, got a little puffy. <laughs> ones that, I mean, right? Do you see that? I mean, I just think they're all hot and oh, look yeah, amazing. All, they're so all, they're all amazing. But you guys remember, they're on this island, right? They're in this house. There's nothing to do. I'm sure they got endless amounts of food. Let me tell you, when I was on House of Villains, there's a lot of downtime. There's an extreme amount of downtime, and there is a gym. Like on Love Island, we had a gym too. I remember with Johnny and I would go out every day and just work out like three times a day. And like, there's just so much downtime. Yeah. So it's like, what do they do? They must be so boring. And they're filming twenty four seven. They even have like cameras in the walls, yeah. cameras on the showers, so cameras when they sleep. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. That's how it was in House of Villains too. Cameras everywhere. There's like you can't hide anywhere. And by the way, you gotta remember too, these people are on a show for I don't know, X amount of days. They don't get any phones, no technology, no TV. That would kill Brittany and I. Oh gosh, probably missing their family so much. Like on House of Jax Villains. cannot be away from me for like two hours. Okay, so whenever my mom was in town, I took Cruz and my mom to go to the um, Chocolate Emporium restaurant that is at um, City Walk for Universal Studios. It's like so close to our house. We live like eight 
eight minutes away from Universal Studios. So I take mom and crew so that Jackson has some alone time since, you know, we have company in our house. It can be overwhelming at times. So we all go. I actually asked for this, too. And me and mom and crews were all there. We're, we're having dinner. We just sit down, and Jack starts calling me, asking me, hey, uh, are you coming back yet? I was like, I just sat down. We haven't even ordered our food yet. And Jax was already wondering if I was coming home. So... I cannot imagine you being gone for too, too long. I know. It was driving me crazy on House of Villains. And let me tell you another thing, too, by the way. So there is no technology, by the way. So they gave us our phones on the show between, like, 1 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the morning. and we can Because only... a lot of you have kids and, like, yeah. businesses and that plus, you have to check in yeah. on. So they they're they're us... different. They're in their 20s. They don't have kids yet. They're not married. They're actually just dating and, and like, figuring us... life out. And they only allowed us to check uh, our email. We couldn't, like, text or anything. So they, yeah. had, they watched us what we were doing. Yeah. It's crazy. Which is good so that you can't give, because like, like, Lord knows, Jax loves to gossip. I could see Jax like <laughs> being on the side being like, hey, Brittany, this person got kicked off this week. Or like said, they're like, I just know that you would want to tell me everything about it, which I is know. so funny. And I still haven't told you anything about it. No, so. no. I can't wait to watch it. I'm going to figure out things with the rest of you guys. So it'll be fun to recap those episodes as well. By the way, sorry, just to cut you guys off. Uh, i cut you off. I didn't mean to. Uh, October 19th, I am doing a viewing party in Boston at the Greatest Bar with Johnny Fairplay. Play, October 19th viewing party House of Villains come and hang out with yes, us yes that'll be so fun. fun so if you're in the Boston area I would love to meet you come by have a drink and oh my cousin Jessica lives there I'll have to have her oh, like yeah. come by and yeah, come yeah, to the yeah. party and see you absolutely Summer is coming to a close, and it's time to think about rejuvenating your skin. Osea's Andaria Exfoliate and Glow Duo is just the thing to rehab sun-soaked skin and prep for fall. The Andaria Cleansing Body Polish provides an easy one-step exfoliating, cleansing, and moisturizing shower essential. It has a unique gel-to-milk texture. And the Andaria Algae Body Oil seals in hydration after the shower, moisturizes, and makes you glow all day, rich yet non-greasy. I love that. Oh my gosh, you have got to take care of your skin, guys. And especially after the summer, being in the sunshine all day, check them out. I love their products. They have amazing skincare. This is amazing and it will help you so much exfoliate and glow, make your skin beautiful. Osea has been making seaweed infused products that are safe for your skin and the planet for over 27 years. Everything they make is clean, vegan, cruelty free, and climate neutral certified. I love that. Save 16% on the Andaria Exfoliate and and Glow Duo. Plus, with our promo code, you'll get an additional 10% off. Prep your skin for fall with the clean, vegan skincare from Osea. And right now, we have a special discount just for our listeners. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code Brittany at OseaMalibu.com. That's O S. E-A Malibu.com and use code Brittany for 10% off. That's B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y. Fall can be hectic and it's easy to get burned out, especially if you have a toddler and you're opening a bar and you're on television. It's a lot to juggle. So stay fueled with Saqqara's plant-rich organic nutrition programs. Their seasonal delicious meals are delivered to your door, ready to eat and designed to optimize digestive health. Don't want to sacrifice breakfast to get the kids to school? Looking to upgrade your tired desk lunch? Too wiped out after work to cook dinner every night? Saqqara has you covered with over 200 chef-crafted meals. Sakara delivers science-backed, plant-rich nutrition programs and wellness essentials right to your door. Their organic, ready-to-eat meals are nutritionally designed to help you optimize your well-being with results you can see and feel. From digestive wellness and ease bloat to enhance energy and safe weight management. And right now, our listeners get 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash reality hits or enter code reality hits at checkout. That's Sakara S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash reality hits for 20% off your first order sakara.com slash reality hits fill it for yourself so delicious she talks about etiquette get your fingers out of your mouth she talks about where to find a deal you know if you sell me something on instagram i buy it whoever markets to me does a fabulous job she talks about the economy we used to joke that'll be the thing to send them to therapy okay we're creating jobs can we look at it that way she talks about parenting these kids want to come home they don't want to yeah, leave well, they don't want to drive son. they want to stay in the womb let's talk with heather debro every thursday on podcast one or wherever you get your podcasts 
You guys know we love talking about relationships, sex, therapy, and dating. And you know we love 90 Day TLC Reality TV. What's your favorite reality couple? I'm going to say Lauren and Alexi. Oh, yeah. We love 90 Day TLC. Gosh, we love their reality shows. Kind of obsessed. Which is why we're excited to tell you that the new official 90 Day The Last Resort Sessions combines your favorite 90 Day couples and couples therapy. Ooh, ooh. A 90 day, the last resort sessions from TLC's Ed and Liz and Jovi and Yara and Angela and Michael. Oh my gosh, Lonnie. Angela and Michael are coming wow. back. Have reached their breaking points, which we love all these people. We yes. watch them all the time. They're but- all at a retreat in couples therapy and at the end have to decide to either break up or stay together. I love that they're in therapy. They need it. <laughs> After each episode, the couples therapists who are actually in the room with the 90 day couples come onto the podcast to share what happened. They share their own take on what the couples are going through and how to deal with issues of cheating, sex, and communication in your own relationship. To be a fly on that wall. Seriously. Everyone deserves a healthy relationship. So come for the drama and stay for the therapy. Well, we'll be there for sure. <laughs> Listen to 90 Day, the last resort sessions, wherever you get your podcasts. When Reality Hits is brought to you by Sakara. Sakara's flexible signature nutrition program makes it easy to plan nourishing, feel good meals around your packed summer calendar. They have breakfast, lunch, and dinner options that you can customize when you subscribe. We absolutely love Sakara. The meals are absolutely incredible, so delicious. It's like having a nutritionist and a chef all in one. Whether it's a backyard barbecue or a much needed vacation, Sakara delivers ready to eat, plant rich meals meals that help you look and feel your best, which we all love. Not sure where to start? Take their online quiz. They'll recommend the products and the program that work for you. They're science-backed, ready-to-eat meals, and right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash reality hits, or use code reality hits at checkout. That's sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash reality hits hits to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash reality hits. So what are you waiting for? Going back to the Hannah and Marco really fast and going back to Hannah and Bergie's relationship where they became best friends. I love whenever they're asking Bergie if he would be a groomsman or a bridesmaid and Bergie was like, oh, f- it, I'll be a bridesmaid. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. I don't like to cuss on here. I was just repeating his words, but um, I love that so much because it's just so cute. I love that they became good friends. I feel like Bergie is just so sweet. He gives me Tom Schwartz vibes. Yeah, he really does. does he, he really me- does. And you know, I had a, a bridesman. Zach was in my wedding as my like bridesmaid man, whatever you call him. So I don't know. I just thought that was super sweet. But all in all, we loved Love Island. We're so happy Hannah and Marco won. And we can't wait for another season now that we're ready for the next season. I, yeah, man, I, and now everybody is coming up to us because we've talked about Love Island being like, you have to watch the ultimatum on Netflix. So maybe that'll be our next thing. We're going to tune into that and see how that goes because you never know. Like, ultimatum could be a good thing or ultimatum could be a terrible thing and ruin your entire relationship. <laughs> Remember whenever Katie gave Tom the ultimatum and then he, like, gave her... Did, was it, like, a ring on a necklace or yeah, something? Yeah, a ring on a string. A ring on a string. Yeah, it was a, it was a promise. <laughs> like, a promise. Oh, my gosh. Goodness it's gracious. Every, every girl wants is a ring on a string at that age. Especially, <laughs> they were together for, like, 10 years or something crazy already. Like, I'll give you a ring on the string. <laughs> So I think that Ultimatum Show might be the next one that we discuss on the podcast if everybody's loving it like they're saying. Chris is babbling in the back. Chris is babbling in the back, and it's just so cute. We're just at home today recording our podcast. We've been so busy lately, so it's been hard to get into the studio. We love going to the studio, though, but it's been fun to be able to like do things at home and watch the shows and catch up on everything and get to like just have a little gossip sesh it's so my weird husband. too not having your mom here because your mom's been here for a whole month and oh Mama, my gosh Mama was here too she was helping with a, yeah. my new bar she was doing yep. Mama's beer cheese that's going to be coming back oh she yeah here. and that's something else i want to talk about because this kind of went viral on social media and reddit which i freaking hate reddit because the trolls live on reddit let's go to troll of the week it's all you reddit haters troll of the week Whenever I look at that page, because I very, very, very rarely look at Reddit unless I absolutely have to because something crazy is going on or something is just, I don't know, just something's happening where people are like letting me know. 
Um, but oh my god, it just makes me sad. It makes me sad for people who actually like have that much hate in their heart for people they've never even met in their life. What do they say? What how it just was that thing? it just makes me I don't know. I, it made me feel really bad for them. Yeah, they're trying to like hate on us and hate on everybody else, but like goodness gracious like they actually like dedicate their life to picking out every little thing on social media or like rumors or whatever and then they like write about it like 24 hours a day it's kind of weird but hey thanks for thanks for watching all of our stuff and thanks for listening to our podcast guys like you know at the end of the day you're just helping us out so thank you to our reddit haters (laughs) troll of the week is our reddit haters hello (laughs) i see you I don't like to look, but whenever I see you, I'm not going to lie. I feel bad, and I'm praying for you because, shoo we to have that much hate in your heart and to not even know somebody and think that they can talk about our child or, like, our our life and our family. It's just so odd to me. Know, it really kind it of kind of like, breaks my heart for them. It kind of breaks my heart. It really does. I feel bad for those people. I mean, it's such an angry, like, yeah. disturbed human being oh, who wants man. to steal somebody's... Like, why? What is wrong with Instagram? Recipe. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is something that I want to talk about because this went kind of viral. And so somebody apparently was trying to <laughs> steal my Manuel's beer cheese trademark. And it wasn't just like some random company who wanted to... And this is the only reason I even looked at... Um, uh, read it in the first place because I never ever looked there. It's the worst. People are awful on there. But whenever I went and, and I had to look at it, it's because my friend Janet calls us and she's like, "Hey, somebody on Reddit is trying to say that they stole your Mamaws Beer Cheese trademark." And I was like, "Hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up." So what had happened was is we had Mamaws Beer Cheese trademark. For a long time. I was paying for it for years and years. Well, COVID hit. Nothing was happening with Mamaw's Beer Cheese. So we let it expire. Well, as soon as we came out with the bar happening and that we were going to sell Mamaw's Beer Cheese again, I go and I I get it back. I own Mamaw's Beer Cheese, trademark. But somebody on Reddit was actually trying to steal Mamaw's Beer Cheese, trademark. And actually wrote on there, this little act of vengeance made me feel good this week. Because they tried to steal Manuel's beer cheese trademark from us, which is so, God, it just makes me feel so bad for that person. I know who is this thing, right? She, I almost want to blast her, but I, 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 also I don't, know, don't, I don't even. I don't even either. care that much about who it is. I just honestly, I feel really bad for them that they thought that they should do that, and also like my Manuel is seventy nine years old. Manuel's beer cheese is hers. You know, I'm trying to make it bigger. She sells it in Kentucky and does all that. We're going to sell it at our restaurant, yes. But, like, this is my grandmother's recipe. My grandmother's saying that she sells to her friends and family back home in Kentucky. We are bringing it to L.A. with the help of my grandmother, who is, again, 79. So somebody trying to come in and steal the trademark just is so... Gosh, I don't know. It's It's just it's, It's just disgusting. It's sad. And, gosh, it just makes me... I like, I'll say it again. It just makes me feel so bad for those people who actually think that they can do that and just have that much hate in their heart for people they've never even met in real life and only see like a little bit of our lives on social media and on Instagram. Like, I, I don't know. It's just so sad. But again, we did win it. We got it back. Nobody beat us to the trademark. So if they're trying to say that they own the trademark, they don't. Brittany Carwright owns that forever and always. It's our family's recipe, and it is staying in our family That's forever. Right. Ha. That is right. You won. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> anyway, just to, to get back with the bar, guys, the, the bar is going well. I get a lot of questions on when's the bar going to open. I'm trying to get open within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, obviously. we're trying hard. It, you know, there's obviously a lot of things that go into opening a bar, hiring. You know, we're remodeling the whole place. We're painting. Uh, new t- The TVs just went up. We got 10 TVs. They yes. all just went in. Uh, we're doing a beautiful mural. That's yes. Yes, the mural inside. artist Daniel just started. He's doing an amazing job. It is looking amazing. We are going to start posting before and after soon, but we want a little bit more to be done because, you know, this means a lot to us and we want it to look really good whenever you guys see it for the first time. But we are so happy with the progress. Yeah, the food is going to be delicious. Mamma yes. was here. She was, uh, we were testing out some new recipes. We got some amazing things coming we're just so excited a lot of comfort food a lot of southern food yes uh but you know what the southern twist yeah. yeah it's definitely a sports bar but it's gonna be like an elevated like sexy fun very beautiful sports bar yeah, indoor, it's not yeah outdoor, indoor, outdoor area it's gonna be amazing things are going great we're starting to hire 
oh, it's actually happening. Yeah, it's really, really starting to happen. It's just, it's a lot of fun, though. It's a lot of work, and I'm learning a lot as I go, but I'm just so excited. I can't wait for all you guys to come and check it out. Add it to your Vander Crawl or whatever yeah. you guys call it. Vander Pump Crawl or Vander whatever. <laughs> what yeah. Do you call it? Vander <laughs> Crawl. Just add it to the list of things to see when you come to LA. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. We're having so much fun doing it, though. The partners are amazing. It's going to be such a fun spot right there on Ventura Boulevard. I mean, who would have thought we'd have a bar right on Ventura Boulevard? <sighs> no. Not to jump around, but I got to tell you, Brittany, I went to a concert last night. Well, yes. We all have heard. So I was supposed to go with Jax, but I couldn't get out of work. So Jax okay. had to go to the concert without me, which was the 50 Cent concert. It's been all over the media today. So Jax, tell what happened from your perspective. Okay. So Brittany, I don't, I'm not a big concert goer i, I, love, I love music but i'm not i don't love it enough to go to a concert and listen to it. it's not my thing britney loves it anyway she went to a was it little wayne concert well hold on talk about what happened okay, at 50 well, cent right. first so i went to the 50 cent concert with my good friend will and elaine they invited me and i was honored to go i had a great time um i had a great time listening to buster rhymes that was c- iconic for me because i grew oh, up oh yeah on i would have loved that part he i would have loved 50 cent too but he played i think really just four i think four or five really good songs but the point of this whole story was it, it was i was honored to be there and I was grateful and it was fun and all, but we got there at seven o'clock. Okay. The concert I thought started at seven. 50 Cent didn't go on till 10 30. 10 30. He played maybe five songs, got pissed off, threw the microphone at somebody, and walked off. What pissed him off? I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm just Has it not off. been on the social media yet? What made him mad? I don't know. A fan, I think, made him mad. Yeah, or but whatever. were they heckling him or something? I don't, I don't know. I mean, because normally, like on all these concerts recently, it's been like somebody from the fa- the studio or the audience or whatever has been throwing things at the artist, yeah. which is awful. I saw it but to now, drink. It happened to Drake. And uh, BB Rexa. You know, she yeah. got like hit in the eye. Um, but like for it to happen, vice versa, like he actually threw the microphone into the crowd. Yeah, he threw the microphone in the crowd. It was, I, we were in a suite, so we had a really, really good time. The concert kind of was almost secondary because all my friends were there and I was hanging out with Will and Elaine. I just had a great time being with them. But like the amount of issues they had, like every every other, like I feel like every other minute there was sorry for the technical difficulties. I mean, we're at Staples Center in Hollywood, in Los Angeles, and all these things were going wrong. It was at Staples Center was at and Staples. there was technical uh, technical difficulties it's actually called crypto but i will always call yeah, it staples. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know sorry. what you mean crypto is out of business anyway so i'm going back to calling it staples <laughs> anyway so again we get there at seven o'clock so we left my house at probably what six because it takes about an hour to get there so we wanted to be there early like i said i didn't go to concerts i didn't know he was not going to go until 10 30 so we sat in the suite for like four hours just you know having fun drinking a little bit but it was just kind of like this is this is crazy like he didn't even go on until 10 30 then he, he sang four songs and and he was done. Like for the people who paid all that money, because yeah. I think tickets to, were five hundred dollars. Oh, I'm sure they $500. were. A lot. I know Will had something. You know, he invited me, so I, we didn't have to pay. I don't yeah. know if he paid or not. But I felt bad for some of those fans that had spent all their hard earned money, and they had to sit there for four hours listening to absolutely nothing. Yep. Until he got on. I can't believe that. Cause me and Josh were like making jokes about it before. We were like, okay, we should bring signs and hold them up, being like, Fofty, Randall owes us money too. Fofty. Yes, <laughs> like, I know. Still, Fofty, help us get our money back. Like. We were just making jokes like that, which would have been hilarious. We could have been like the uh, Courtney Kardashian with the big sign in the crowd, and it would have been like softy. <laughs> <laughs> that made me think about that. I mean, we were in a sweetie; we would have never saw it. Yeah, but that would have been hilarious. I know. Oh but my anyway, goodness! I, I don't think I'm ever going to go to a concert again. I think that kind of ruined it for me. <laughs> but you said Busta Rhymes was awesome, oh, it was and I'm awesome. sure when Fifty was actually performing, that was good too. It was just because it ended so short; it took so long. I just think we were there for four hours before okay, anybody yes. went on. We were sitting there twiddling our thumbs. Like, yeah. Yeah, what are I people doing? They're just sitting there talking to each other, just getting drunk on $30 drinks. Yeah, like, <laughs> woo, spend you know, a like- lot of money. If you have small kids, then you know they need clothes, but they grow out of them so quickly. Luckily at Quince, it's not just luxury clothing at affordable prices for me. It's stuff for the whole family. Quince offers a range of high quality items for your kids and your wallet, like a two pack of organic cotton sweaters for the little ones, athleisure for back to school and cashmere sweaters for $45 for the whole family. Plus, Quince adults and kids items are both priced 50 to 80% less than similar 
similar brands. Great for hand-me-downs. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabric and finishes. Get luxury quality fashion at affordable prices for the whole family at Quince. Go to Quince.com slash JB for free shipping and 365 day returns on your order. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash JB and get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash JB. Check them out, guys. We all know those kids grow too fast. You'll love this. When Reality Hits is brought to you by Rakuten. Rakuten is the most rewarding way to shop and save because their members earn cash back on everything that they buy. Rakuten is the shopping platform that partners with over 4,000 stores across every category. Beauty, clothing, electronics, home, department stores, pets, etc. Here's just some of the brands that they carry. Nike, Bloomingdale's, Levi's, Samsung, Sephora, Dyson. I mean, there's so much more. Rakuten is the smartest way to save money when you shop. Membership is free and easy to sign up. The store pays Rakuten a commission for sending them shoppers and Rakuten shares the commission with its members. You get paid via check or PayPal quarterly. Their members have earned over $4.6 billion in cash back. No wonder Rakuten has 17 million members who are already saving. Right now, start shopping at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app to start saving today. Your cash back really adds up. Jax loves when I use Rakuten because mama likes to shop (laughs) check them out guys and we'll be right back And I'm Megan. And we're the hosts of Trust Me, Cults, Extreme Belief, and Manipulation. We both have childhood cult experiences, and we're here to debunk the myths about people who join them and show that anyone can be manipulated. Our past interviews include survivors and former members of the Manson family, Nexium, MS-13, Teal Swan, Heaven's Gate, Children of God, and the Branch Davidians. Join us every week as we help you spot the red flags. Get new episodes of Trust Me every Wednesday on Podcast One or wherever you get your podcasts. When Reality Hits is brought to you by Sakara. Sakara's flexible signature nutrition program makes it easy to plan nourishing, feel-good meals around your packed summer calendar. They have breakfast, lunch, and dinner options that you can customize when you subscribe. We absolutely love Sakara. The meals are absolutely incredible, so delicious. It's like having a nutritionist and a chef all in one. Whether it's a backyard barbecue or a much-needed vacation, Sakara delivers ready-to-eat, plant-rich meals meals that help you look and feel your best, which we all love. Not sure where to start? Take their online quiz. They'll recommend the products and the program that work for you. They're science-backed, ready-to-eat meals, and right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash reality hits, or use code reality hits at checkout. That's sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A, dot com slash reality hits to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash reality hits. So what are you waiting for?
When Reality Hits is brought to you by Sakara. Sakara's flexible signature nutrition program makes it easy to plan nourishing, feel good meals around your packed summer calendar. They have breakfast, lunch, and dinner options that you can customize when you subscribe. We absolutely love Sakara. The meals are absolutely incredible, so delicious. It's like having a nutritionist and a chef all in one. Whether it's a backyard barbecue or a much needed vacation, Sakara delivers ready to eat, plant rich meals meals that help you look and feel your best, which we all love. Not sure where to start? Take their online quiz. They'll recommend the products and the program that work for you. They're science-backed, ready-to-eat meals, and right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash reality hits, or use code reality hits at checkout. That's sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A, dot com slash reality hits to get 20% off your first order sakara.com slash reality hits so what are you waiting for i know i had talked about on my podcast how excited i was like a couple months ago to go to the little wayne concert right and i never got to talk about my experience there because we had so we had guests on after the concert so i'm gonna go back a little bit here because this 50 cent thing just brings it all back up I took my best friend Kara to the Little Wayne concert um, with me. You guys know I was so excited. I love Little Wayne. He also came on hours and hours late, had no openers, had nothing like that. Um, they had a DJ for a little bit, and then the DJ turned off. I mean, people were, like, sleeping in their chairs and everything because it took so long for him to come out. He finally comes out. He does awesome. We're having the best time. We were, like, loving it. And then he brings on all the young money people and takes a break. So people go out and, like, get their drinks. They go to the bathroom, do stuff like that whenever he brings out the young money crew. Who, in my opinion, could have been the openers so that we weren't sitting there for so many hours right. waiting for Lil Wayne to come on. Right. So while while they're out there, you guys all saw this because it went all over social media and all over the news and everything. Um, Lil Wayne comes out and he's like, I don't um, – he didn't, like, like that there wasn't enough, like, support for the young money people – after we had waited for like almost four, three to four hours, and after we sat there with no sound or anything, and, and Lil Wayne had only done like half his set, comes out and like drops the mic and leaves. And everybody starts walking out, me and Kara at the bar. We could not believe it. The concert was over. Oh so I, it's kind of like the same thing that happened with 50. I mean, it's a little bit different, but like people pay so much money to come to these shows and then they stop the concerts early. Like I feel so bad. I know that some people probably flew in, bought like tickets and spent all that money, but had to buy hotels, hotels and yeah. all that stuff. So I just feel so bad for I that. Do too. I, I, like I said, that, that ruined concerts for me. I'm never going to again. I don't, I didn't want to go anyway, but the only reason I went is because I want to hang out with Will and Elaine, but See, I, I'm not a concert guy. Yeah. And that just proves my point that <laughs> I will just listen to it on the radio. I do not need to go to a concert. See, it's, I still, even though Lil Wayne was so far, like it, 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 was a bummer for sure but i still love little wayne i still love 50 cent i'm like i'm still a big fan me and kara had a great time anyway but it is so annoying and i do feel for the people that like flew in from out of town yeah. like that's gotta be i cannot imagine how they're feeling i mean i go to a dave matthews concert i had a good fun a good time at dave matthews <laughs> but that was also when i was in high school but i've been to a bunch of concerts that were so much fun you know yeah i'm just yeah i'm just not into it. i just don't just get this like it. like quitting early yeah, and i don't stuff. understand that like, like like how do their agents and like yeah get, like don't they get dropped like how does and think this... of how expensive the venues are especially like at staples center or crypto yeah. center or whatever it's called like that's that's gotta and be expensive it was to sold rent out. out it was sold out like there was not a there was not an empty seat yeah. so i mean i'm just people just i just don't understand people have the patience just to sit there for four hours <laughs> doing nothing and Absolutely can you imagine, nothing. like, the lines at the bar were probably so oh long. My God. Like, for, for <laughs> you guys little... had a suite, so you had, like, a yeah. different But, thing. I mean, I did walk around the concourse, and I saw people buying the $30 beers and everything like that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you spent all this money basically just to sit in a chair and drink beer. I just, I don't know. I, yeah. Maybe I'm crazy or whatever, but I'll never be going to a concert again. So. Oh, my goodness. Well, speaking of all of this stuff that's been happening... Going back to reality TV a bit, because that's why we're here when reality hits, of course... I have a question from the fan, and it says, because I thought this was interesting, and I'm sure a lot of people would love to hear about this. What is it like to actually do, like, confessionals and interviews um, on a TV show? I'm going to be honest. And that question came from Haley Bard 352 by the way. How do the confessionals work? You know, If you're talking about Vanderpump Rules, right. I can go into that because... 
It's not like on some other reality TV shows, like how you see, like maybe like 90 Day Fiance, for instance, because we love that show, or even um, Love Island. Right. Like they get to talk right away. Yeah. Like they can go into a room and like talk right away and like answer questions while it's still fresh on their mind. Right. We don't get to like really go into our interview space for like weeks later. Weeks later. So then you, you get ready and you get into an outfit and then you spend like three or four hours sitting in the chair and answering questions. The producer will like ask you a question and you'll answer it as best as you can. So it's just a little bit different to do it on like a reality show like structured like Vanderpump Rules and I wish Housewives they did it and stuff. more like um, was like Jersey Shore where they actually had a confessional room. So that you could go into. So something yeah. happened for instance say Brittany and I got in an argument and then I would go straight into the room and talk about it because the reason I don't like the way they do it now is because I don't feel the same way as I did when this situation happened. For instance, if I got in an argument with Kristen, okay, like first episode, yeah. and I'm not doing the interview for about three or four weeks after that episode. You're not mad I'm at not, Kristen anymore. I'm not mad at her anymore, so yeah. it's hard to get back into that mind frame of being upset because we usually we squash things, yeah. and usually in reality TV, things are squashed fairly quickly. Yes, of so course, because you actually to... have to face things. Yeah, like In so... real life, if you're mad at somebody, you can go like a couple of days without talking to somebody, but whenever you're on reality TV, like you have to turn around like the next day and like talk to them on camera yeah. and face your problems. Yeah, it's yeah, that's one of the hard tough things. Yeah. We have to talk about everything. But like I said, um I wish they would do it a little different. Um on, on Bravo where they would have the interviews right after the situation happened. I mean, that's probably the only thing I would change just because you're not, like I said, I, keep, I just repeated myself, but you're not in the moment. You're not like if you're upset or you're emotional, you're crying, you want to see that real emotion and it's just tough to do four weeks later. When but the producers are really good at getting you back in that head space. Yeah, they are. And, really you know, and also we're good at our job. We know how to like do it and like talk about it and like try to put ourselves back to where you were whenever you actually had those moments. And but that's what it's like. You get an outfit, you pick it out, you sit in the chair for like four hours, producer asks you questions, and you respond. Oh, it's an all-day yeah. thing. You're it's there a whole for, thing. You're there for four to And it can be super hours. emotional because it, if you are past something, you have to get back in that headspace to where you're still upset about it, and that could be rough as well, but or if you it's made part it, or of what if, makes reality TV such gold. Or if you've done something stupid, and you're like... Embarrassed? You, know, you look bad at it, yeah. you're like, God, I was wrong, but you... Yeah. Yeah, Dad. So, or Chris if you're wanted to say hi. Or if you do an embarrassing <laughs> thing, Brett. If you do something embarrassing or you do something stupid or whatever, and you're like, I was wrong in the moment, but you have to go back and act like you were right. That yeah. sucks. That yeah. sucks, too. And that happened to me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Jax, you're probably like, oh, gosh, why did I do that? But hey, I was correct at that moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, part, that part's tough. Yeah, but that was a good question that I really wanted to talk about because it's so different on every every kind of reality show that you watch, too. And Love Island definitely asked them right away. Right, and I right. thought that, you know, that's really fun. And our confessionals are also in a studio. Yeah. Um, you know, they're in an off location where we have to go. We put different wardrobes on. And it's, it's a set. So, yeah. yeah. Here's a random question from a fan, but I thought it was funny. So I thought we should address it. This is from Mimi TV 713. I saw Larry Burkhead at the wedding. What's the relationship there? <laughs> this is such a random, has nothing to do with what we're talking about the podcast today. But if you watched our wedding, Larry Burkhead was here was at our wedding and the story is behind that we went to the derby and we met larry burkhead and danny uh at the derby and we ended up like multiple hitting years. it off multiple yeah multiple years. years we ended up hitting it off with him we ended up riding in like the um after limos parties, and going after to after parties, parties together party. yeah and we became and we stayed in contact with him and stayed friends with him um and it was just so cool because I've always been such a huge Anna Nicole Smith fan. Like, she's just so gorgeous. Like, I think about that guest ad and how, like, gorgeous she is. You know, yeah. she's such an icon to me. And so funny. Like, remember her reality show is such a train wreck, but also so funny. It was so you know? Yeah. And, and Larry's such a great Yeah, guy. and Larry is so nice. So nice. And yeah, that's why he was at our wedding because we met at the Kentucky Derby. And we were hoping to match him up with somebody. I was, yeah. trying, to find, <laughs> I was trying to find one of my single ladies to date him. But I just thought that was such a funny question and it was something I wanted to address because we did really love him and it you know, we still are in contact with him, but that's how it happened. It all started at the Derby. Good Kentucky question. Derby. Good question. Yeah. Um, one thing we're gonna get into a little bit of parenting here. Um this is a little bit hard for us to talk about because we know that we don't want people like judging our family or anything like that. But I do want to talk about Cruz because we've had so many comments and so many questions like, is Cruz talking yet? Um, and things like that. So Cruz does talk. He does say like mama, dada. He does have his words. He says doggy. He says ducky. He says outside. He says his certain words that he, that he has, but he has a bit of a speech delay. 
so we have started him in speech therapy and he is doing absolutely amazing he meets with his teacher who we love so much twice a week um we are definitely starting the early intervention and you know what he is just perfect no matter what struggles or anything that comes along we will face them as a family and he's just the best thing that's ever happened to us he is so smart he is absolutely brilliant he can do anything he wants he's just not very vocal yet he's only two years and three months old people need to give us a little bit of space like let him be little he is a little kid plus it's good to talk about because other parents yeah i'm sure there's well so i talked to so many people who have said my nephew didn't start talking until he was four or my niece didn't start talking until she was three or the more that I've talked about this, the more I've realized that other parents have to deal with this and that we shouldn't be embarrassed about this. This is something that we are going through and it's something that we are handling and Cruz is in speech therapy and we're doing early intervention. We're starting him in OT as well. We're starting him in classes. We take him to the trampoline park. We take him to the zoo, the aquarium. I mean, we're taking him everywhere. He's got a great life. He's actually. got a great life, <laughs> but we are definitely working on this and you know, I'm sure there's other people who struggle with this and a lot of mom guilt goes into this. Like, what am I doing wrong? Like I get down on myself sometimes like thinking I'm not doing something right. But at the end of the day, I know that I'm reading books to him every day. I'm, doing his flashcards every day we're playing all his toys with him he has an amazing amazing time he's the best thing that could ever ever happen to us and i know that so many other families and parents probably feel the same thing like what am i doing wrong that's making things difficult for him to learn or start speaking at the same rate as some of his best friends but you know what we are working on it and i just wanted to put that out there because i've seen so many questions asking about it and sometimes it hurts my feelings i'm not gonna lie whenever people are asking things about my son it's kind of like not really your business but i know at the same time we do put our life out there and we are very honest and open about this stuff so i wanted to like let other parents know who might be going through the same thing that we are that speech therapy is helping and we are so excited for his progress Look, you can hear him yeah. in the background yeah He's ready for his class. <laughs> he actually has class today with Miss yes, dory yes um so it's been a it's been a fun experience watching him grow there will be hardships sometimes but you know we're loving every single moment right daddy yep we're having a great time and like i said we we love this little guy so much and he's just such an amazing smart intelligent kid i mean he does everything he does everything else yeah amazing yeah but, uh, yeah so it's okay he's that, in the know. 90th percentile of height he's so tall he looks like he's three or four so i think that's another reason why everybody's like is he not talking but his you know his feet are gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> but you know he is so special so amazing whatever comes our way we will handle it and you know we're just so happy about all all that but definitely if you guys are ever experiencing something like that definitely look into speech therapy because we've already seen so much of a difference and he's only like a couple weeks in so just a little bit of parenting one-on-one with Jax and Brittany right babe yeah and if anybody ever has anything that like any comments or, or about that or hey what they're doing and they want to share anything yeah give us, us some know. advice too you can always obviously email um you know, Brittany, uh, and, and let us know. We would love to hear from you and say, hey, maybe we can get some pointers from you guys. Or yeah. Share pointers or whatever, because we're all in this together. We all want to help each other out. Of course. Yeah, we're so. learning as we go, just like every other first time parent in the world. And another thing that our speech therapist taught us about was fish oil. So we yeah. started him on fish oil and maybe some other parents out there might want to look into that as well, because we've heard nothing but amazing things about fish oil. All right, one more question. This is from Producer Steve. We miss you, Producer Steve. We can't wait to see you soon. Is it refreshing when people don't know who you are, Jax? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's Oh no, Jax wants to be known by everybody. <laughs> don't lie. Honey. I am not that vain. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> uh, no, I love all my fans. I love everybody and I, you know, um, yeah, there is a few People that don't know who I am. <laughs> is it refreshing? I mean, sometimes it's What cool. kind of question is this, Producer Steve? My God. <laughs> sometimes it would be nice, though, to go out and like not have to, like, you know, you can just, like, be yourself and yeah. not have to worry about what people are thinking. You know, I don't mind. There's there, Most of the time, I don't mind. Like I said, we signed up for this. Yeah, this we're world. so grateful I'm, and so I'm very lucky. I'm grateful for everything. Yeah. I try to t- I take pictures with everybody. I say hi to everybody. I comment back on Instagram to everybody. I always answer questions. I'm just very blessed to live this life that I live, and it's all because of you guys. I, yeah. I, I just truly, truly appreciate it. So I don't understand people that get into this world, and then they don't like people, or they don't want to be bothered. Like, why are you in the entertainment world exactly. if you don't want to be bothered? I will always go out of my way for any anybody, yeah, any of my same. fans. 
same with Regardless me. Regardless if they know me or not. I just, that's the kind of person I am, believe it or not. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I love what we do and I love meeting with the fans. But uh, yeah, for the select few who don't know me, you better get to know me. <laughs> that's right. We love it. We have so much fun things coming up. We cannot wait to talk about with you guys. Of course, we can't talk about everything just yet, but just know things are happening and things are coming and we are so excited to share everything with you. Keep those questions coming. Yeah. We love answering it. Uh, even if, uh, the questions about you know the old episodes or whatever. Yeah. We finally get to talk it's, about all the old stuff. And, yeah. And just, and I can try to justify some of my actions. We <laughs> yeah. can clear some things up. We want to do a recap of an old episode soon of Vanderpump Rules. So if you guys have your favorite episode, Ooh, let me know. We want to do like a little voting thing so that you guys can pick your favorite episode for us to recap. Yeah, I would love, love to hear from you guys about that. Also, I want to recap our wedding. We had so many questions yeah. about our wedding, about yes. the castle, about being in Kentucky, about our family, about our friends, who was invited, who yes. wasn't invited, um, our pastor, um, you know, yes, we had the Lance Bass, Lance Bass. in so, sync. Yeah, definitely ask us questions. Like I said, we're going to recap a few episodes, I think. And, yeah. Uh, our, just favorites. ask anything you want. We're going to figure out which episodes we're going to do, but we would love to hear from you which one you would be most excited to hear about. We're going to have so many amazing guests coming on soon. We have so much coming up that we cannot wait to talk to you guys about. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Again, don't be a Reddit troll. Be better. Do better. <laughs> we love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're having the best time on When Reality Hits. With Jax and Brittany. Woo-woo! You guys know we love talking about relationships, sex, therapy, and dating. And you know we love 90 Day TLC Reality TV. What's your favorite reality couple? I'm going to say Lauren and Alexi. <laughs> oh, yeah. We love 90 Day TLC. Gosh, we love their reality shows. Kind of obsessed. Which is why we're excited to tell you that the new official 90 Day The Last Resort Sessions combines your favorite 90 Day couples and couples therapy. Ooh, ooh. On 90 Day, the last resort sessions from TLC's Ed and Liz and Jovi and Yara and Angela and Michael. Oh my gosh, Lonnie, Angela and Michael are coming wow, back. Have reached their breaking points, which we love all these people. We yes. watch them all the time. They're, They're all at a retreat in couples therapy and at the end have to decide to either break up or stay together. I love that they're in therapy. They need it. <laughs> After each episode, the couples therapists who are actually in the room with the 90 Day couples come onto the podcast to share what happened. They share their own take on what the couples are going through and how to deal with issues of cheating, sex, and communication in your own relationship. To be a fly on that wall. Seriously. Everyone deserves a healthy relationship. So come for the drama and stay for the therapy. Well, we'll be there for sure. <laughs> Listen to 90 Day, The Last Resort Sessions, wherever you get your podcasts.